with your permission sir madam we'll start the second panel discussion now uh, one one thing i would like to mention here uh, dhiren is a very young and and the reason to invite uh, dhiren is that when he came back from us he met me and i asked him what are you doing so he took all names of ev league universities where he has studied and he said i am doing farming so even my reaction was are farming so he is like why is this reaction so we met at a mall in pune and immediately that was the time when three of us were talking about this conference and immediately on that uh, cup of coffee i told him that there is one panel discussion happening and i want to invite you as a speaker he said me kai karu tikade a very cute reaction i said you come because the students should know that people can get back to the roots people can get back to naturals people can get back to organics and he is completely driven by the passion of serving good authentic organic food to the society so i really like that idea and uh, then i mentioned the name of college so i told him that he said with whom are you doing the conference i said banuben dr banuben nanavati pharmacy college second reaction me kai karu tikde yun so wo pharmacy sunke to madam wo dar hi jate hain log mere ko pata nahi kaise isko tackle karna hai second conference there should be one panel discussion on how to tackle this issue so so uh, jokes apart but uh, that is the reason we got him here sometime madam we should i mean i i don't know whether it fits in but we should have a team of students visiting his facility it's slightly it's it's towards satara if you know uh, slightly ahead of pune i know i don't know how many kilometers away from pune so it's just about 4 uh, and a half hours from bombay 4 and a half hours from bombay yeah mumbai 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 four and a half hours away from mumbai so uh, i think we should visit because there are a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of foreign dignitaries also visiting his facility and why not our students so they'll have a good amount of learning so uh, okay so the topic is incorporation of natural ingredients in food and we would like to start with dr uh, abhijit pujari this is one laboratory madam we are we have highly recommended to meenal madam and tabassum madam that our students should go and visit because it's a world class facility uh, that has been set up unfortunately in february when the request came in they were going through some some audit uh, and it could not happen but i think uh, you all should definitely consider so doctor we start with you uh, ashish do you have a mic yeah so uh, we're talking about natural ingredients now generally what are the challenges you all face while testing adulteration in food yes uh, yes obviously because uh, for first of all as a speaker or might be something thing as uh, some like that actually this is the first time for me no problem uh i'm the first time for me as well and no as well actually i am a laboratory or technical person over here so whatever actually i am speaking with the technical language might be you people are knows very well okay so uh, for the adulteration sir uh, means number of means out of like you know the 10 customers are there and they are claiming these are the organic products are there but out of 10 nine customer adulteration should be might be there contaminants adulterations and additives or there we find out at a trace level so up to come upcoming days wherever the claim for organic and herbal yeah this is the main actually uh, the problem or might be actually uh, issues for the adulterations one well, adding of the adulterations preservatives additives this kind of actually happens to might be the standard of their uh, shelf life impact on uh, means uh, survival of their product into the market okay this is the main reason actually and generally it is said that post covid there is a great demand for natural food products or organic food products so have you seen any spike in case of uh, demand from the industry to test and launch uh, so before they would test it before they launch these food products yes. so have you seen any increase in the demand 
of natural or organic food products post covid or was it just a delta in it and now it has just tapered down how is it <laughs> okay obviously it's an uh, after covid actually demand should be actually spike level because okay. right now in this industry after covid or might be this infestation is going on in a higher side so from the actually client base or from there actually uh, the requirement from the clients as well for natural organic product requirement testings and they they, they should be launch their product after covid as well so this is the spike period for them so uh, professor shah i'm going to i'm going to park these two questions and i would be very happy to hear it from you the first question is uh, how do we uh, now that you know you are in stream you are also a part of bureaucracy now uh, so i'm going to park this question and at the fag end i'm going to come to you as to how can we check the adulteration in food or what are the steps that are being taking uh, taken like like dr abhijit pujari said that you know uh, there's a lot of claims around organic but 90% of the products that they test are not really organic and that's a very sad state i think that is what we have heard that it's globally like that and and that is very sad and the second uh, point that we would like to discuss with you is uh, being a part of food industry i have seen a mad rush post covid to to you know launch healthy food products now how healthy they are uh, personally my take on it is that you know it's just a combination of a few known ingredients and people claim to be healthy the marketing is more than the content but we'll park those questions and we'll we'll go to the two other panelists but we would like to have your expert opinion about that uh, one example i just need to be actually uh, yes. present over here because in covid uh, uh, in homemade remedies are actually might be actually exposed based on like curcumin or yeah, haldi yeah. powder like yeah, the same yeah. so i found over there actually after that in a haldi they are actually claiming that this is the natural ingredients over there correct correct and which is very much uh, might be increasing the immunity against uh, viral infestation but I so so, so the google so the google master and the whatsapp university is killing it all for natural <laughs> and, and and all such ingredients yeah that, but i am very much uh, worried about the same because at that time uh, for children uh, the mixing with the with the uh, means it's a mixing of you know the curcumin powder with the other ingredient yeah, yeah. it is very harmful for the child so so that's why i want his experts opinion his because expert because opinion of what also. adulteration all these kind of things as a day laboratory as a whatever science which is in a uh, you know uh, the high, they are adopting the high techniques but there are some hurdles over there with us as well how to differentiate natural world uh, natural one and adulter adulteration one because some of the actually guidelines over there we can't differentiate yeah differentiate the same for example milk we are struggling for milk artificial and natural yeah right now we are struggling for the same practically from lab we are very in a difficult to how to segregate the some of the certain parameters thank you thank you doctor moving over to ashish with with your natural antioxidants uh, which food companies uh, are you serving currently so good afternoon to all all the dignitaries sitting on all the delegates and my friends over here so uh, ora nutricam has been a startup that has been working in antioxidant space for last 3 or 4 years and covid was a sudden boom for us which was a positive for us but in the food space so just as a student if you are working on any ingredient if it is known in the market it's well and good but if you are coming up with anything novel then there is a lot of hard work that needs to be put in you need to understand that when you go to the market to sell this product there will be 1001 questions and even if you solve those 1001 questions there will be 1002 question from someone else so if you are working on any novel ingredient just be aware that you will have to work very hard so from food perspective tocotrienol being an ingredient which was not known to most people even for that matter fssi did not know about tocotrienol we pushed uh, mails to fssi consistently and in september 2021 they notified tocotrienol to be a part of vitamin e officially so that is when we could actually push before that we did tri did trials in the food 
So we have variants for oil soluble variant, a water soluble variant. Even we have a variant for dairy. So right now, thanks to all the D2C companies, it's been a very exciting time. We have had trials for shelf life uh, enhancement in laddus, a very basic product which you need. But these are being exported. So we had laddus, we had kachoris which were being exported for antioxidant uh, improving the shelf life of the edible oil. We have done trials and uh, some companies are already in process of procuring this material from us. So uh, cakes, bakery items, even ice cream for that matter. So people want to try new things and all the categories across food, all across food categories people have tried and we are on the verge of supplying them. Some have already started taking. So if you are going to have a new ingredient, just be ready to face 1001 questions. Thank you. There's one good brand of laddus called Wow Laddus. Has anybody tried it? You should order it online. Uh, next time, we'll not keep a dairy milk as as the price. Uh, as Professor Shah uh, mentioned uh, before lunch, is the dairy milk that you are giving as a price? It is is it natural? So, sir, next correction that we will have, I cannot get it tomorrow, but next time when we have this conference, we'll keep that wow laddu. So it will be a natural ingredient as a prize, and it's a very tasty laddu. I, I I actually request everybody to see. So that that, that is where we are also trying that vitamin E that Ashish is uh, talking about. So those are all natural. The story story behind that brand is fantastic that person wanted something out of india to be exported and people have it as dessert so you should you should once uh, go and try that is a very nice person sometime we'll get him for a lecture in one of our panel discussions uh, moving on to you dhiren uh, when when we were discussing about organic farming you said way back in 1950s i think or 1960s i don't remember very well you had your organic you, you had your farm certified organic. Now, I didn't even know that something as back as 1960, there was organic certification. But how do you really identify an organic product? Because now the laboratory testers here are saying 90% products of 90 of products are not really organic, which is a dangerous statement. <laughs> so how do you really identify or how do as consumers we go and buy organic product because we pay the price we, we are ready to pay the premium but we don't get real good organic products how do we identify them right uh, firstly good afternoon to all of you all here and uh, let me begin by thanking principal ma'am uh, svkm uh, college of pharmacy ora rohit sir who's been a mentor to me as well and the entire ora uh, team that's here thank you for having me over and it's been a pleasure all the way since the morning up till now so taking on to your question sir uh, yes in agriculture when i returned back in the year 2020 i didn't know an a of agriculture literally to an extent people used to show me sugarcane and i used to get call it maize they used to show me maize and i used to call it sugarcane so that was the state of agriculture but coming back to the roots my first five years i spent over there and uh, i had my roots didn't go to school was all the way into the farm and then from there on education started so the bond was there going to your question you said that uh, we got organically certified first in the year 2000 by noca uh, before that we were organic but we couldn't get certified because back then there was no uh, labs that we were aware of certifying us and uh, before that though those were uh, barren lands that were naturally organic because they were not cultivated so organic is a word i in my individual capacity i would say is abused today because when i was abroad you'd be surprised friends that you'd even see even if, right now if you google lays you'd find organic lays online and you can try that try that out we've got coke zero with zero sugar i wouldn't be surprised if there's organic coke in the future as well so that's the way it is so i would more than me actually there are better experts who would talk about testing and i i would love to know more home remedies like for example professor shah mentioned that he's worked in the field of jaggery in jaggery since i've been working in the field of jaggery coming from a sugarcane belt we stopped so we stopped our entire production of sugar cane into sugar and only made jaggery out of it since 2000. 
and uh, to an extent we failed with multiple varieties and we couldn't figure it out or we couldn't make people believe the price we were asking for it because back in time sugar was a ru- sugar was maybe for 10 rupees but jaggery was only 2 rupees now it's the other way around where sugar is 25 rupees and jaggery is 250 rupees yeah but unfortunately you all would be surprised that jaggery can be made even at 25 rupees and i'll tell you the ingredients in that jaggery since we are talking about ingredients and we are saying let's rethinking ingredients that jaggery is made with chalk powder which is chalk powder the chuna that we use yeah. calcium carbon yeah. and rangoli and the reject of sugarcane factories and of chocolate factory and i speak this responsibly with what i have seen with my own individual eyes because i couldn't believe it me making jaggery at a cost price of 55 60 rupees and people are selling it on an mrp of 50 or 60 rupees people started making a fool out of me that you're cheating us and that's where we went into the depths and we went in as customers pitching for orders to these guys who are doing it in certain parts of maharashtra i wouldn't like to name them but that's the way adulteration is today sir so yeah. uh, pinpointing anything to be organic or not in my opinion the only answer to it is credibility of the source and tracing the source to the t just the way today we go to our doctor when we are sick we need to go to our farmer when we are hungry like you have a family doctor you need a family farmer as much as it might sound impractical for people staying in urban spaces in bombay in pune in bangalore but it is happening today bangalore has a district called mandya right near it i was amazed the way the farmer network is penetrated in covid sir all retail outlets and all uh, malls were shut all the food that these cities got from was from the farmers that came directly into these cities so i believe that 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 traceability is the answer to adulteration and proving the real organic to be organic thank you thank you so much by the way no income tax department is sitting here what is the size of farm that you're talking about so <laughs> you'd be surprised i have leased 3 acres of land that's it the rest everything belongs to my father Well, that's okay so can <laughs> okay <laughs> okay anyways one, that, one thing one thing i'll just add up into same because dhirendra knows very well he might be actually exposed to the overseas countries as well concept of uh, her organic and the difference between organic and natural ingredient foods or products so i just might be asked to audience not both for the seniors one only for the student what is the difference between organic and natural ingredients products anybody can so any anyone me? the difference between organic and natural except aditi anyone for organic and natural no aditi you can answer i'm joking yeah 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 please can can you have the mic one minute one minute there is Yes, I believe that uh, organic can be natural, but natural cannot be organic. So basically, the organic uh, plants uh, which are grown will not have the preservatives or the chemical uh, substances that are used to grow like uh, the plants over there. So they are grown with uh, natural techniques and uh, natural fertilizers and techniques apart from the regular uh, which are used. Very closer. So, so he deserves a category. If it is closer, he deserves a category because I also couldn't frame it the way. <laughs> can we have a cadbury to give him please okay so moving on uh, to the next actually uh, yes, just sorry, let sorry. me actually extend to him organic means in india wherever the pesticide free material is there which is called as organic one organic grading field meets actually there where the pesticide fertilizers that traceability should be not available over there and preservative should be there chemical should be there 
other add up of another things added you should be there but these are the actually pesticide free that's it this is the actually definition of organic in india but it's really full or not i don't know because many other chemicals which is hazardous to our human bodies as well this is the truth not only a pesticides one and pesticides in a regulatory body whatever actually as per fsci as per apida we just regulate or we just test those pesticides only but what are the source wherever actually organic farmers are used to grow their crops the unknowingly or knowingly lot of other entities entered and which is actually we are not we can't recognize or we can't test it okay you rightly touched in the end uh, you know uh, you rightly touched in the end even people say that you can't use the chemical fertilizers you know urea wagara dalte hai abhi sir to jante hai satara se jo aaye ne badkar sir to sugar cane ko to urea sarras you know yeah. i mean but uh, ba, 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 even uh, you are not entitled to call your farm produce as organic if you have used synthetic fertilizers you know so it's 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 a pretty complex uh, you know phenomena yeah 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 ek mazi ke baat bata to aapko like the same actually some of the organic producers are coming to us are maine spray nahi kiya to aayega kaise aapka galat hai but this is a systemic way means like by water by soil it should be going to that particular plants right. maybe chemistry hai science hai nahi lekin lab galat hai hum sahi hai आप और धीरेन आंसर देने आए हो कि डराने आए हो जागरी में चौक पाउडर है सर अभी मैं एक बात बताता हूँ आपको आई एम वर्किंग विद लेबोरेटरी लास्ट वन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स मुझे पता रहता है कि यार मैं इतना टेस्ट कर रहा हूँ घर जाके मैं क्या क्या नहीं खाऊ पर आप वही खाते हो लेकिन सोना पड़ेगा भूखा तो अच्छा है कि जो है खाओ Oh, that's true that's true uh, that is why i have parked your first question because i want to narrate a story to to professor shah before i take his answer uh, moving on to ashish ashish what are the challenges that generally you face uh, while while getting access to research laboratories or testing laboratories to test your natural products is it easy or difficult so uh, testing or not all labs have all testing facilities of course so you might have some labs which are specializing in food you might have some labs specializing in pharma ross is one labs which has all the 360 degree approach but again when the first time we went to ross with a test they said ye kaun sa test hai so so the universe of testing is so uh, huge that for you to find some specific test it might be possible you might not not find it in your city you might have to go across other cities and in some cases abroad also so there is one test that we have not been able to do for last 4 years so we have to export our product to one of the cities to get it done so these are some smaller smaller aspects but uh, right now the situation has improved the quality have of labs have improved and the instruments have also Im improved what i see in a college like bncp uh, though, so the instruments that are already there in this college so relatively similar instruments are there in the lab but lab would of course keep upgrading it to a level where uh, the companies require so yes there is a good improvement but of course there is such a big universe of tests involved these days that even if you give one test you will have a request for another test and you will have to start finding so this is again a problem with ingredients where it is a new ingredient if you have literature established for a specific ingredient you can always find so again literature finding is another source i am sure in your syllabus you are all doing that and when you take your ingredient and you try to establish some literature with it 
you if i have seen the poster presentations and i3 presentation i was a part of the panel so when i have seen this there have been references people have given references of from where the data has been given so you are, are aligning on some subject or some topic or some writer's material to give your own interpretation of that uh, ingredient but when you actually go and implement there might be some things which you don't know and where testing would help so testing is an area which is quite open you will have to find the right partner for it because if you don't get that test you will be stuck at some place so the infrastructure is improving i'm happy that colleges are also improving that in infrastructure so that the base is set and for advanced testing the the labs uh, can be outsourced so here i must admit to one thing uh, when i when we had a visit of bncp college i seriously did not know madam until then and uh, mr vinay paranjpe would also agree to it because his reaction was also the same when we saw your lab and the kind of testings that you can perform when we discussed with uh, professor tabassum we did not know all such kind of tests were available in the academics so there is there is a great amount of disconnect between the industry requirement and academics and i think that is also one of the objectives second very good lab that i saw in pune and because of nsic i went to that college was the lab in modern college they are also very well equipped so we were amazed i mean uh, when vinay ji and me we came out of bncp we came we saw he said boss ye log kidhar the apne ko itna testing karne ka tha to so there is a great amount of disconnect and for that one particular test we have been scouting around the world as to where we can get get those tests done so i think here you also need to step forward like sir said you also need to play like sanat jay surya or sachin tendulkar come on the front foot and scout for industries because that will really make the students industry ready or employable so coming to you dhiren india is a very price sensitive country ev league usa everything is okay price are consumers ready to pay the price for organic products is it affordable right great question and um, specifically uh, especially specific to all of us and most of us sitting in the hall because either we are on pocket money or part time so that's why it pinches i've been there done that and uh, so to answer your question straight away covid was a big game changer uh, where unfortunately Indian market is price sensitive only to the things that it shouldn't be price sensitive towards like for example food our bodies our well being our thinking our physical fitness is all pertaining to what food are we going to be consuming within the body it's only in our country amongst all the countries that a few countries that have been to where it doesn't matter ठेले का वड़ा पाव भी चलेगा चाय की टपरी की चाय भी चलेगी पर गाड़ी अपने को मर्सिडीज ही चलेगी सो वेन यू आर स्पेंडिंग इन लैक्स यू डोंट गिव इट अ सेकेंड थॉट ऑफ जस्टिफाइंग दैट कॉस्ट बट वेन यू आर थिंकिंग अबाउट द फूड दैट इज एक्चुअली नरिशिंग यू डे इन एंड डे आउट वी आर एक्चुअली थिंकिंग अबाउट अरे ये दस रुपए का है और वो पचास रुपए का है पर दैट फिफ्टी रुपीज थिंग एक्चुअली वो नो बूस्ट यू इनफ टू अर्न हंड्रेड रुपीज मोर that mindset is still not there in our indian markets and unfortunately it is not the people who are to be blamed or we youngsters to be blamed it is our governance as sir had said esg uh, earlier is a critical component in terms of defining the direction for the society so governance in every i'll just take a minute on that one um, in the us or singapore when you mentioned both these countries people are the main resource that these countries nurture singapore to be honest doesn't even have its own water forget crops and everything. people is only thing that they have their fda is so strong sir it's even stronger than mossad in india it's opposite our fda is so weak that even literally a havaldar is stronger than our fda department all put together a police havaldar is stronger because he takes more fines than what an fda department does so going back to your question yes a price sensitive market 
organic is not viable at the moment because governance is not yet taken its role as it should but if tomorrow a consumer led uh, mission or um, uh, a revolution comes through which is coming through as i said because game changer was covid and people are now looking at a bop back of the product pehle hum log dekhne ke samne se jo acha dikhta hai wo utha lo but today what we look at is the bop kya hai bhai isme acha hai nahi hai abhi h3n2 most of us have heard of it i thought i was down with it so i had almost message rohit sir and ashish that might miss it but such viruses are going to plague us even more if you don't look at that bop and look into the ingredients so that's why some people are looking at it my opinion the price sensitivity is there but if governance if everything falls into place and if this wave continues of youngsters looking at the bop then it's not going to be a problem to consume good healthy clean produce thank you so much now we are running short on time but i have to get this answer from a uh, professor shah before before i come back to that parked question quickly i'll narrate two stories i've worked for a very big corporate not very professional to name it though and one of the projects was to research on chavan prash so the r and d lab was doing an outsource research for chavan prash and then one fine day one very young student like you all came up saying that this chavan prash looks to be adulterated and i have faced this and that is the reason i am not naming the corporate and uh, the hod said okay you keep the report here and let's discuss it later and then that report vanished and then the research vanished and then we were called inside and we were told ki utna aula hai hi nahi jitna chavan prash bikta hai to hum loki se kaam chala lete hain to aap report de do ya mat de do काम हमारा चलता रहेगा बिकॉज वी आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एज अ ब्रांड आई वॉज वेरी सरप्राइज एंड देन माई बॉस सेड वेलकम टू द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड सो देन दैट वॉज माई ऑफिशियल इंडक्शन द सेकेंड इंसिडेंट इज आर अनदर कंपनी सेंजी बायोकेम इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट इंपोर्टर्स ऑफ ऑलिव ऑयल इन टू इंडिया वी डू अ लॉट ऑफ बी टू बी सेल्स सो पतंजलि और Uh, Himalaya. Whoever use it for face wash, shampoos, and all, we supply it to them. Amway. So uh, we work with one of the largest companies in the world, Megasa. Olive oil, जैसे भी चाहे जितना ऑलिव को निचोड़ लो, 25 परसेंट से आगे एक बूंद नहीं निकलता है. If 100 liters is produced globally, very comfortably 500 liters is sold. Very comfortably. So one day I asked the director of Mega. He's a very big man globally. I said, "Why do you sell this pomes oil in India?" He said, "If browns and blacks start eating, this is a statement he made to me while I was having dinner in his house. While the if the browns and blacks started start eating extra virgin, what will the whites eat?" and that is why pomes has come no it's it's a very dangerous statement i felt very bad i felt very bad but sir you are an expert in the field and we could see that how do we go about this adulteration you know at times when i look at olive oil i i find and i talk this to my wife i find it really difficult to get a certain batch to my own home and feed it to my daughters that that is that is the truth okay. that's not i mean and that is why i was waiting ki main ab inko kab pakdu aur adulteration ke bare mein kab baat ho no seriously sir it is very difficult so so sir i have packed those two questions what you are doyens and we look up to you that some policies some days will come how are we going to now check adulteration i mean everybody sitting here wants to know that how, what is happening in that arena we don't know well first of all let me admit that i am a fingerling in the uh, entire chain of uh, bureaucracy that you talked about yeah, I know. so uh, uh, you know how the bureaucracy is sort of you know has its uh, strong arm the ias uh, so called and and how much they heed to the professorial committee is i am 
I have taken this assignment one and a half years back and I'm moving in those circles and I see that, uh, you know, where uh, sort of, you know, in terms of making uh, executive decisions, you know, so it's, it's difficult. But at one point in time, um, I mentioned to you about this BKC organization called FDA and the commissioner was extremely, extremely believer in uh, academics and academicians. And he said that you tell me in two months uh, in BKC, I'll give you 20,000 square feet and we will set up our own lab, you know, because uh, FDA, uh, you know, in, in, in the state of Maharashtra would have something like 250 food inspectors, you know, and they do send them on the missions and you know how they work. Right. So, uh, so um, he said that uh, instead of uh, depending on these external labs, we would like to set up our own independent labs. And uh, when that point in time, I was quite a pal with the commissioner who happened to be sort of, you know, uh, coming with a good academic background and also with IS tag along with him. And, uh, you know, he made to sit, you know, I think in the how many walls this room has you know, so in the in this somebody who was making a, um, um, a sort of uh, you know manik chan he made the ceo sit outside four hours and he said i want to talk to you on any subject under the sky, sky i would like to make this gentleman wait outside because he whatever he had been doing that time some case was going on you know so the case was of course you know like uh, uh, water has 300 percent oxygen no, you know, <laughs> anybody who knows a little chemistry, uh, you know, the oxygen doesn't play any role in your digestive system. It's only respiratory system. So it's making fool of the consumers that your water has got 300% oxygen. While he was trying to make, the manufacturer was trying to make a case because he has put ozone into his. And ozone has certain shelf life uh, in the water and it, in its like backward reaction, it gets converted into oxygen. So he was right in the sense that from 9 ppm to he has taken it to 27 ppm. But uh, that is only a kind of a disinfectant or making it, but it does not sort of, you know, the consumer is being fooled that your water has 300% oxygen and, and, and so on and so forth. So, what I am trying to say here is, uh, you must have heard about that uh, tomato ketchup war, which happened between, uh, I don't know, two multinational companies actually, and then, ki isme kaddu chalta hai, aapne kaddu ka example diya, you know, because kaddu, lauki is, is, is cheaper than um, uh, tomatoes, for example. Cheaper so, than aula also. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, ketchup mein kaddu hai. Yeah. You, you know, and then of course the CSC is the C, you know CSC is one of the NGO Delhi based NGO, uh, you know it's Center yeah. of Science and Environment. You know they found that uh, you know the water which is sourced for making Coca Cola has certain yeah. pesticides and all those kinds of issues and 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 and, and, and going the last story in this is like you know uh, bread having bromate, right? I think the bread contains and then it is found something and then of course the jaggery example. I think sir had. Burar, years, Burar years, Burar years. In, in your own form. You go to UP, for example, you know, there was a, you know, at that point in time when I had started, just started working on Jaggery about 15, 20 years back, I happened to not only travel to the areas like Dehradun and all those uh, Merit and all that where they call it Kolu, you know, a lot of, and there, there was a ZTV had made a film called Mita Jahar. Yeah. Yes, you know, yes, uh, yes. it might be running still on the internet, but if you it's get on, to see it's on it, YouTube, yeah, it's it's, it's there really on the YouTube Mitajar. Any kinds of chemicals, sir, they put it. You know, we use bindi extract as a coagulant to separate non-sugars and and and. But there they use something, and they the those who are owners, manufacturers of those jaggery making, they say, sir, hamare family ke liye, friends ke liye, ham alag se bana ke rakte hai. Ye to bechne ke liye hai. Yes. Textile chemicals, sir, which is forget about, and they say that we know that it's a pet me dukta hai, ye hota hai, but it looks golden yellow, you know, shining yellow. So, Gujarat ka mere jaisa koi, uh, you know, ma, ma, matlab, I'm Gujarati, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> Ahmedabad market me chalo jao, any jaggery people would fall for it, you know, something to make your dal sweet, you buy a jaggery. Now, who bothers whether it is chemical free? 
or it is made with you know chemicals which are of textile grade not food grade you know just to sort of make it uh, yellow shining looking and things like that you can't make it organic jaggery is always like it it's brownish you know it's not uh, golden yellow or something like that so and to tell you truth, you know, while I was working on this uh, b b jaggery uh, process and product development, and we can give you, by the way, automated gural, you know, so you don't have to stop jaggery making, you know. In Satara, we can give you, we have a unit which is now working in Kolapur. It will stop in uh, March end, for example, jaggery season. But we have put up a jaggery plant there. I'll connect with I'm you. Not, I'm, I'm not doing marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind such marketing, right? You're giving it free. <laughs> I love such marketing. <laughs> so that time, for example, the um, uh, civil supplies department, you know, somehow it came to them, you know, how can you stop or how can you measure these chemicals which are used in jaggery making? You know, is there a quick test, for example? So I don't remember the chemical that they find in this, you know, but there is some uh, test which you rapidly do it and find out what is the PPM level of that chemical in the jaggery, you know, to make it uh, uh, know that. So what I'm trying to say that uh, neither the BKC got that lab because uh, we could not sort of, you know, give, give him in two months that he, this is the lab and you use the space like that because, you know, I mean, uh, but... Um, Yes, I mean, I, I am completely convinced that forget about bureaucracy and all that. Consumer, and you know it better than me, sir, that consumer is the king. I mean, it's not only in the theory or uh, the words or something. that People can put pressures. Bislery, which is not too far away from here, unit, right? Yeah. It was locked for seven days. Yeah. You know, so if consumers can, I can first hand tell you that not too far from Nimbakar's place, there is Ahmadnagar district. Two distilleries, which were, you know, powerful uh, yeah. sugar lobby, which were running those distilleries. The groundwater was polluted because of the distillery waste was not, you know, and the consumers stopped this two distillery unit. So in the sense that as, I mean, this is again for the young students who are sitting here, the youth is a power, you know, I mean, and, and I think as as much as we, our youth, our consumers become sort of, you know, more and more uh, aware about it. Uh, you think anything can happen like this in Mumbai water supplies, you know, day in, day out, there is a sort of test. And if something uh, non, um, um, what do you call, um, uh, acceptable uh, um, uh, toxicant goes into Mumbai uh, the water supply, people will just, you know, sort of pull down the entire thing. So that, that that kind of an awareness uh, i'm optimistic, I'm optimistic. Yeah, yeah. we all should thank be you. thank so you sir i'll just take a minute on that yeah um, no i'm pushing Only you on the timeline because we yeah i know i'm sorry. pushing you but it's on adulteration only so jaggery for instance friends this is critical okay if you add jaggery to milk do you all know what happens fat jata hai jab duplicate hota hai par jab asli hota hai so, it doesn't and Okay? So, if you, you all as students, you all have projects. Principal ma'am, even if the college can help the students and we all can also contribute with any kind of support. If you all can take up projects with any common day-to-day -day product that you like, for, like, for example, if Aditi likes sauce. Yes, she can take up sauce. I'm sorry, I don't know most of her names, but if anyone else likes maybe uh, milk, you can take up milk. But try and build these because your creativity is way, way beyond anyone who's already progressed in industry. So if you all can think of simple ways of finding home solutions to finding adulterant free and adulterated food, then it's the best contribution that you can not only do to others, but to yourself. So when we do something so try and do that, that'll be the best thing that you all can. That's what I want to tell you all and thank you. And my farm is open to any of you all to please come and explore and experiment as much as you all want to. Thank you.